Welcome to the Woman Warriors Podcast, where we're working to help you call a truce with your anxiety. The information in this podcast is not a substitute for seeking help from a licensed mental health professional. Now, here's your host, Elizabeth Cush, LCPC. Welcome back to the Woman Warriors Podcast. I'm your host, Elizabeth Cush, and I am a licensed clinical professional counselor in Annapolis, Maryland, where during normal times, I see clients face-to-face as well as online. But during the coronavirus, we are doing all what we call telehealth or teletherapy, online therapy, If you're interested in knowing more about me or my practice, you can go to progressioncounseling.com or womanwarriors.com and you can find us there. If you would like to start a meditation practice, don't know how to get started, feel like your mind is too busy, or you have trouble making the time, you can request my free Worried Women's Guide to meditation, and you can get started meditating in one to three minutes a week. Go to progressioncounseling.com or womanwarriors.com, and there is a link at the very top of the page. And I think you can also scroll down to the bottom of the page of the homepage, and there's also a sign up there. Well, today we're going to be talking to Sharon Martin. She has been on the podcast two times two other times. So we're welcoming her back. And we're going to be talking about how to find your own voice um, and what might be contributing you to you silencing that voice. And I know that is something that I have struggled with throughout my life and that only recently have I realized how much silencing my needs, my voice, what I am thinking, feeling, believing has contributed to my anxiety and learning how to identify what it is I need and speak that and say it out loud and share it and feel it has really helped me manage my stress and anxiety. And I hope in the future, very soon, I will be offering a course, a coaching course on this. So keep, stay tuned for that. But before that, we are going to talk to Sharon Martin. So Sharon Martin is a licensed clinical social worker and a licensed psychotherapist, mental health writer, and media contributor on emotional health and relationships. Her psychotherapy practice in San Jose, California, specializes in helping individuals struggling with perfectionism, codependency, and people-pleasing. Her own struggle to feel good enough inspired her passion for helping others learn to accept and love themselves. Sharon writes the popular blog, Happily Imperfect for Psych Central, and is the author of the CBT workbook for perfectionism, which we talked to her about the last time she was on the podcast. You will find links to all of Sharon's Um, blog posts and her workbook and her website in the show notes. So let's get started. Hi, Sharon. Welcome back to the Woman Warriors podcast. Thank you for having me, Elizabeth. It's a pleasure. Oh, I'm so excited to have you back on. But for listeners maybe who haven't heard the earlier episodes, if you wouldn't mind uh, telling them a little bit about you and what has inspired you to do the work that you do. Sure. Um, So I am a psychotherapist in Northern California, the San Jose area, which is um, near San Francisco. Um, And I have a private practice. So I see individual clients there. I also do quite a bit of writing on mental health topics, um, usually the same types of issues that we're going to talk about today, perfectionism and people-pleasing and codependency. Um, I write a weekly column for psychcentral.com. And then I have a couple years ago wrote the CBT workbook for perfectionism. Um, 
and some various other um, ebooks and things that I have on my website, but I enjoy um, creating, you know, resources for people to have um, as well around these topics. Hmm. So I have been, um, you know, working in the field of mental health for, you know, over 20 years now in various capacities, doing different things in community mental health and so forth before kind of landing where I am now. But I think like most people, you know, the career has sort of evolved over time. And part of that is, um, you know, figuring out where my passion really lies. And I think where I feel like I'm, I guess, both most effective and, um, you know, really connecting with people around these particular issues um, and feeling like I've I've got something important to help people with in really re rediscovering, I think, both who they are, you know, sort of as their core authentic selves, and then at the same time, really understanding that they have value as, as they are, um, helping people feel worthy, um, worthwhile, and like they matter in the world rather than, you know, I think a lot of us, you know, kind of fall into trying to be what other people want us to be mm. um, and sort of, you know, trying to fit into some um, model of what we should be as a woman or as a mother or as whatever um, fill in the blank um, you have there, yeah. um, you know, and it's sort of like, I feel like I kind of help people strip away some of that external pressure um, and expectation and try to find out, you know, who am I as a person? Um, you know, for some people, I find it's like they really have a sense of like, I've lost that over time. And other oh, people, yeah. quite a lot of people also tell me like, I don't think I've ever really known who I am. Like, as far as I can remember back, it was always trying to be who somebody else said I should be. Mm. Um, so, so that's, that's sort of, you know, one way of putting, you know, what, what I do. And I think what we're going to, you know, talk about some more today and really, yeah. um, you know, helping people figure out what gets in the way of that, I think, um, and why it's so hard for us to be ourselves and feel like we're okay, just as we are. Oh, um, yeah. 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 So the, so that's what I do. And, you know, I think like, um, like most people, um, most therapists anyway, um, it's like when we do, you know, research into, into a certain subject, it, it tends to be, you know, the things that we're, we're interested in because they matter to us, right? They're, oh, yeah. they're generally, there's that personal connection. Um, I was just, um, listening to, um, Gretchen Rubin's podcast. I don't know if you're familiar with her work, but she has a very popular um, podcast. And she and what she the way she phrases it is usually research is me search, which I was <laughs> like, well, that's very spot on because I think that's true. The, you know, the direction we tend to go tends to, you know, be something that that uh, we want to figure out about ourselves um, as well. So I've definitely found that to be true. That it's, you know, both meaningful work for. Um, you know, the clients and readers that I have, but also for myself and oh, um, totally. my own process of, um, you know, figuring out who I am mm -hmm. um, along the way. And Oh and my so gosh. Forth. So true. I, and I feel like the people that I, the women I talk to here on the podcast, the ones who are so passionate about their niche, their niche, whatever, that you know, mm -hmm. the people they serve, it's because they know what it's like to have been on the other side when they were struggling or get, going through a difficult time and that they've figured out how to help themselves, but also help others. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And so today we're going to talk about women and the difficulty of expressing our needs. And I know personally, I have struggled with this and I don't, I think it has taken me maybe until relatively recently to realize how much that contributes to my not expressing what I need mm -hmm. and being able to voice it contributes to my anxiety. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. But so why, why, why is it so hard for us? Why is it so hard for us to say, you know, no, I don't want pizza. I want Chinese mm -hmm. food tonight or whatever. Well, I think there's, the, well, there's sort of a real basic answer to that, which is you can't ask for what you need if you don't know what you need. Mm -hmm. And I think like that's 
one piece of the of the problem that we need to solve is is figuring out what is it that I need, and and again I think there's often that disconnection between the expectation and the reality, and the reality is that we all have needs. Yep. Um, the expectation is that we don't have any needs. <laughs> ah, <laughs> right. So true. So right. True. I mean, and it sounds ridiculous when I say it out loud. Like, how could anybody not have any needs, right? I mean, as human beings, um, you know, we clearly have needs for basic things like food and shelter and water and rest in order to keep ourselves alive. But I think beyond that, you know, we often have a hard time accepting that we actually need things. Um, yeah, and that, that we, need that we should need things. Yeah. 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 And that we need things from other people, I think, in particular. Mm, yeah. Um, and again, you know, I'm, I'm just sort of thinking about, about these things as I say them out loud, because I think sometimes um, for, for women, and I would say often when we're um, really busy taking care of other people, we don't even do a good job of meeting our basic needs. I mean, I think everybody listening has probably experienced a time when they have felt like they are too busy to eat a real meal or... Mm. You know, they're too busy to get a good night's sleep or they're yep. too stressed out to get a good night's sleep, right? I mean, but we yeah. even, you know, forego some of those most basic needs thinking, oh, I can wait. Um, I don't, I don't need to eat. I don't need, I don't need to go to the bathroom. Right. <laughs> right? Crazy stuff, right? Yeah. How busy yeah. is it? Yeah. Um, but I'm going to postpone I, what I need so that I can meet somebody else's need. Oh, yeah. I, yeah, I, absolutely. And I think that that prioritizing of other people's needs for women in particular is something that's kind of um, promoted as what we're supposed to do when we're younger, right? Uh I mean, like this is partially part of our our culture, but um, I think, yeah, little girls, like, don't be too loud. Don't be too whatever. Don't be too messy. Don't be too dirty. But also- take care of your siblings, take care of your parents. Like, Mm -hmm. yeah, that, that our needs are, are, may not be prioritized for us when we're a child. Yes. Yes. Um, So I, you know, I think, I think we're sort of talking about, you know, these different pieces of it, which is, you know, you have to figure out what it is that you need Mm -hmm. and you have to feel like it's okay for you to have needs and that your needs are just as important as anybody else's needs, right? Mm-hmm. Otherwise, we're going to fall into exactly what you're saying. Yeah. You know, this this mentality of thinking, um, you know, my needs, if I even recognize I have needs, well, they're not that important, right? Somebody else's needs matter more, so mm-hmm. I should take care of their needs um, first. And then it, we often have a mindset of, well, if there's something left over, you know, then I can, <laughs> you know, take care of myself, right? I, I kind of give myself the scraps, right? Which um, I think is, you know, is a sad reality for a lot of women that we do that. We literally will just take whatever's left over. And usually there's very little, I mean, because, you know, by the time you're, you're done, you know, working your job or taking care of your family and it's 10 o'clock at night, what do you really have left to give mm-hmm. yourself, right? To meet your own needs. I mean, that's when I think we fall into those types of bad habits of, you know, we sit in front of the TV and eat the bag of potato chips, you know, with, you know, feeling like there's some level of comfort in it, but it's not really what we need, right? right. It's just almost, almost like that's all I, I can sort of muster up to give myself at this point. Right. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 The bag of potato chips, the phone, the whatever, yeah. right? Zoning mm-hmm. out and binge watching too many shows. But yeah. And, and really, though, oftentimes those things are kind of numbing our needs or numbing our feelings instead of tuning into, well, maybe what did I need today? Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. I mean, and I don't, I'm really honestly do not mean to be judgmental about any of those things because I do them as much as anybody oh, else. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> um, because like I said, I mean, it's quick, it's easy. It's, you know, it's a habit. It's what we do. Yeah. That's what, <laughs> um, right? that's what we do. Um, and yes. And when you're tired and overwhelmed and stressed out, of course you want to, you know, detach from that. You want to numb out from it. I mean, that's a very normal response. 
yeah. having those feelings. Um, but I think, I think as we're saying, and like, if we're going to truly meet the real need, we need to sort of back ourselves up, right? We can't be waiting until 10 o'clock at night to even be asking the question, right? Um, right? right. We need to, you know, be asking ourselves throughout the day, what is it that I need? Um, so that I have a chance of trying to give that to myself. Um, and I can, you know, whether that means I need to put it on my calendar um, or I just need to, you know, ask somebody else to wait or I need to, you know, set a limit and say, I'm sorry, I can't do that um, because, you know, there's there are other things that I need to do. Um, and again, like making ourselves as important um, as somebody else's need. You know, and I think I think the other thing that, you know, can get in people's way is that, you know, they may think that if we do this, we start to become selfish or mean, you know, something yeah. along those lines where it's not okay to, you know, set the limit or ask somebody to wait, right? Yeah. Or, or being uh, a burden too. I hear that as well, that like, if I ask, if I start to ask for what I need, then I'm burdening someone else. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 You know, and here's the thing is like, of course, we can't control what anybody feels about what we need and what we ask for. So um, I can't guarantee you that nobody's going to think that you're a burden. But what I actually find quite often is that other people are very happy to offer help and support. And one way that I, I try to help people sort of look at that from the other side is that you know, we usually get quite a lot of satisfaction, joy, um, feel feel good about being able to help other people, mm -hmm. uh, right? And so if we let other people help us, we're also allowing them to experience that joy and fulfillment of being the helper, Yeah. Um, right? I mean, when we never accept any of the help, you know, we think, oh, this is a great thing. I'm, you know, I'm not asking for anybody, for, for anything from anybody, um, but you're also in some way sort of depriving anybody else from giving to you, which probably would feel good for them. Right. Um, again, I mean, I can't say, you know, not in every single situation, but I think we tend to go to the extreme of thinking, you know, everybody's going to say no, they're, you know, going to be resentful and unhappy yeah. um, if we ask for anything. And, you know, there may be some people who fall into that category, but I think people are often surprised to find that that others are very willing mm -hmm. um, to help them out. Um, yeah. And um, actually that there's, you know, some good things there and that it actually, you know, can probably build a relationship in some different ways. Um, because I think, relationships tend to be stronger when they are more balanced and there is that reciprocity rather than it feeling like you're the one who's always doing the giving um, and the helping and meeting everybody else's needs. Because, I mean, when we are not expressing our needs, I mean, the other thing we haven't, you know, sort of touched on yet is that we have needs and if we're not asking for any of them to be met and we're not meeting them ourselves, I mean, what's going to happen to us, right? right we're going right. to get tired and, you know. Burned out burned, and <laughs> resent, resentful. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And and that's obviously, I mean, doesn't make for a healthy individual, but it also doesn't make for a healthy relationship with other people for us to, you know, always be uh, holding back on, on asking for anything. And then we're unfulfilled people who are, like you said, resentful and, you know, kind of walking around unhappy all the time right? Um, because our needs aren't met, you know, and, and sometimes, you know, that can be that, you know, the other person doesn't even know what it is that we're needing or wanting from them. Right. Yeah. I, and, and I find that to be, you know, sitting on as an observer, at, you know, you know, or as an outsider in, in the therapy room, you know, hearing a client potentially saying, you know, I don't feel acknowledged or I'm resentful because I'm always doing for them. But then also being able to hear that, well, if you're not expressing what you, you do need, the other person doesn't know. I mean, right. we think they should know somehow. Yes. Like, there is a part of us, I, I think, that, you know, we want people to be able to interpret what we need, but 
and because we don't know how to ask for it, if we don't know ourselves, then yeah, it just creates this cycle of always feeling underappreciated. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's some sort of magical thinking that I think we all fall mm. into to some extent, <laughs> right? Of, of sort of feeling like, well, if you really knew me, if you really loved me, you would know. Yeah. You shouldn't have to ask. You should right. just know because we've been together for 20 years, right? Mm-hmm. And it, it just doesn't work that way. <laughs> <laughs> like anybody who's, you know, been in a relationship for 20, 30, 40 years will tell you that they still need to ask. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. it just works much better if we're clear with each other. Um, we have a much greater chance of having our needs met if we can directly tell somebody what they are. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Right. And, rather, and, yeah. <laughs> right then, rather than hoping they're going to be able to like through a, a look or a gesture or a subtle comment that they might be able to sort of interpret what it well, is. I think it almost becomes a test in, in some mm-hmm. cases to, you know, like, Oh, you don't, you're not doing what I need um, you to do for me. And so somehow that's an indication yeah, of, you know, that you don't much care, you care. <laughs> yeah. right, yeah. Yeah. versus thinking, well, you know, if you told them and then they could meet the need, maybe that's the indication that they care, um, right. rather than, you know, they're, they just can't spontaneously know because you sighed, you know, I, I don't know what that means. It could mean any number of things. Um, yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, and I, I, I know... Like oftentimes, I think when we're always, if we're always meeting others' needs, there's this part of us that wants to please others, right? We want to mm-hmm. make sure there's this feeling that if if everyone else is happy, I know I did this a lot as a young mom, you know, with kids and husband and family. Like, uh, if everybody else is happy, then maybe I'll be happy too. But th- it's that always giving out there to meet other people's needs instead of recognizing that I had my own is hard. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I think that perfectionism and kind of codependence too have a play a part in this as well, right? Mm -hmm. Well, I think part of part of what you're talking about is, is a strain of perfectionism, which is this notion that, you know, um, is that I shouldn't have any needs, I think is part of that, right? If we're, if we're perfect people, then what could we possibly need? (laughs) Um, True, true. Right. 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 Then we don't, we don't really have any needs. Um, we've already got it figured out. We, we know what to do when, Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Right. Um, But, but of course, you know, none of us really are perfect people. Um, nope. <laughs> and, you know, and, uh, you know, probably nor should we be trying to be. But I think the other part of it is that um, when we get into that sort of perfectionism trap is that we're setting these impossibly high standards um, for ourselves and sometimes for other people as well. But I think, you know, for this conversation, we just sort of think about, you know, what are the expectations that we're, we're setting for ourselves and are they very realistic? And again, as we've been saying, it's clearly not realistic um, to go through life, you know, thinking that we shouldn't need anything. Right. Um, right. Right. Or that we're going to, you know, be, um, you know, be able to, um, you know, meet everybody else's needs and not be tired or not be resentful, right? So if we're, you know, thinking that, you know, consciously or unconsciously, we're always going to be falling short. And I think, you know, this is, this is a huge problem for women, um, is that, you know, we, we say these things to ourselves, and we hear it, you know, from people around us, from society at large, social media, you know, we're getting these messages like crazy about all the things that we should be doing, that we should be able to do X, Y, and Z and do it effortlessly, you know, and not, not be having a hard time about it. And then inevitably we can't live up to that expectation. And so we feel like there's something wrong with us. Like there must be something fundamentally inadequate or inferior about me. Right. And then we feel like we're less than we're not, um, you know, we don't matter. Um, we don't have any worth unless we can be, you know, that sort of perfect mother, perfect woman, perfect wife. Yeah. Um, yeah. Right. So it's this huge setup, 
you know, and, and, and I would say, I mean, that that is sort of this perfectionism piece to having these standards, even though, you know, many people may not really think that they may not necessarily sort of think that they're trying to be perfect, but it's really that there's just this, this impossibly high standard um, right, that right. you've created. Yeah. Um, and other people, like I said, have created for you, but we, we kind of buy into it, unfortunately. Yeah. You know, yeah. we sort well, of think, oh, there's that one woman on Instagram who seems to be doing it. So it's possible. <laughs> right. 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 Yeah. I've got that one friend who seems to, you know, have it all together and not be stressed out about this, you know, homeschooling and working full time and, you know, running oh household, right? Um, yes, yes. Yeah. And if they can do it and look effortless, effortless doing it, then I should be able to do that too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it's such a hard, um, to be constantly striving for that sort of perfect life where everybody's happy and meeting everybody's needs and everything's getting done, you know, just so, as you said, you you know, yeah, you're going to be exhausted at the end of the day and have no time left to give yourself what you need. Yeah, and I think like you were saying earlier, you know, it's more than that too, because then we're not just tired and resentful, but but there's this sort of element of being unfulfilled. Oh yeah. Right. As as an individual, as a person, like if we're not devoting any time and energy or other resources to really like what would fill us up, what would, you know, stimulate our minds or challenge us or bring us joy or creativity or whatever. You know, there there are some, you know, big parts of ourselves then I think that are left unfulfilled. Mm-hmm. Um, and again, yeah. I think this is this is, you know, one of those <clears throat> expectations or ideas that have been put upon us is is the idea that, you know, being a wife or mother um, should be fulfilling in and of itself. And like that actually should be meeting all of those needs. Right. But I think, I think for a lot of women, it doesn't. Um, yeah. Right. And then we sort of get into that, that difficult um, space of, again, I think sort of feeling like what's wrong with me that this isn't fulfilling me. Right. This isn't enough. Yeah. No, I know I struggled with that. Um as a young mom too, it's like, what else do I need, right? Besides giving myself to my kids and my partner and yeah. And so tapping into figuring out like the work that you do with women to help them better identify what are their needs, but to helping them express those in relationship or, or, you know, whenever, you know, that they need to, what's, what's some of the work that's involved there? Well, I usually encourage people to start practicing checking in with themselves, truly just asking themselves, how are they feeling and what do they need a couple of times Mm -hmm. throughout the day? Um, And I like the idea of trying to pair it with like breakfast, lunch, dinner, but whatever works for people, that's just sort of gives people a, you know, a a reminder to do it um, is if you have it connected to something else that you're hopefully going to do. (laughs) (laughs) Right, right. Um, Right. But, but intentionally, you know, carving out, it doesn't have to be a lot of time. It might just need five minutes, um, you know, to just sit quietly for a couple of minutes and check in with your, your body and your mind and your heart. And, um, and like I said, really just think about like, what is it that I'm feeling right now? And what do I need? Um, mm-hmm. Cause I, you know, there's a, there's a connection there. Usually the feeling will help you know what you need, right? Cause if I feel tired, then I can figure out how I need sleep or something like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Right. Yeah. If I feel sad, then I can think, okay, well, what do I need to help myself? Um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. either allow myself to feel sad or to feel better or so forth. Right. Um, right. So that's the part of like that fundamentally we have to know what it is that we need in order yeah. to either give it to ourselves or ask somebody else to help us meet that need. Um, and as simple as that sounds, because I also recommend that clients do that, it can be really hard for some clients to, to follow through with 
checking in a couple times a day. Yeah. Because well, even that yeah. feels like a lot sometimes for them, but uh, yeah. it, it can be very rewarding for sure. Yeah. And, and I would say if that is, is not really doable, try to do it once a day. I mean, mm-hmm. once is better than none. I mean, right. that's another sort of breaking exactly. out of the perfectionist kind of thinking. Start like, small. Right? Do, what, do what you can do. You don't have to do it all. You don't have to do it perfectly. Yep. Um, and people can find some great lists of feeling words or charts that have, you know, different feelings um, on there, which can be helpful too. Because a lot of us, um, if we didn't really learn a lot about feelings um, growing up, it actually can be pretty challenging to identify what the feeling is. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Right. And, or, I mean, and I think it's also helpful to become more specific in the way that we can describe what the feeling is, which again, like, it's like the more information you can gather, um, you know, the easier it becomes to identify what the need is and what the answer is. Um, yeah. To, yeah. to meeting it. So, so that can be a helpful tool. And if people just Google, you know, um, feeling charts or something like that, you'll, you'll get plenty of options. Um, yeah. And, yeah. and like I said, just kind of looking at that and it can help you choose what the feeling is um, at least to get yourself started. Yeah. Um, so, so then yes, one, once you've, um, once you figured out what it, what you need, um, then the question is, well, what do I do with this? How do I actually go about it? Yeah. You know, like some of those examples, like I gave, it's pretty straightforward. Um, it doesn't mean it's easy in the sense that um, it's easy to shift around, you know, some of the ways that your life is set up in order to reorder your priority priorities or reorganize your time, um, things like that. I mean, it can definitely... Um, be a process of trying yeah. to um, make those those changes in order to sort of more consistently meet your needs over time. Yeah. Um, but going back to what you were saying, um, you know, if we think about uh, some of these needs are are what I would uh, call sort of relational needs, right? They oh, yeah. they exist in the context of a relationship, and we do need to ask somebody else um, to help us meet the the need. Whether that's like we were talking about earlier, that I need to ask somebody to help me, you know, watch the kids so that I can get a break, or it's. Um, you know, I, I need to ask my partner to give me a back rub because. Right, right. Or, a hug, or a hug. Or a hug. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. That some things are just, they're very hard um, to do for yourself. Or even if you could, um, it's, it's different because there is, you know, that connection piece that, you know, when we're talking about you know, relationships that are important to us, that, that it's important for us to be able to connect, mm-hmm. you know, physically and emotionally with each other. Yeah. And even I think just that it's important to feel like I can trust that you're going to be there to meet some of my needs, that that, mm-hmm. that, that matters to you. Um, right. Yeah. And that sure. there is that, that give and take in the relationship. Um, mm-hmm. But I liked what you said um, right before this about, that it sometimes can take some time. Like you may be identifying a need that you can't meet in that moment, that, uh-huh. that it may take like, you know, I need to take more time off from work or whatever, but like you may not be able to do that right away or I need a day off, whatever it is, right? Mm-hmm. But, but, but even, even recognizing that it's a need sometimes is enough, right? To reinforce that, oh, I do have needs and it's okay to have them even if I can't immediately gratify that need. Yeah, it's an important piece of it because if we don't recognize that we have a need, I mean, how it's pretty unlikely that we're going to go to the effort to- to Make changes or get it, right. Exactly, to to go to those those places to try to get it. So yes, yeah. I, you know, yeah. I think when you think about like the process of, of change, the awareness, right, the recognizing like what mm-hmm. the problem is always is at the beginning of that process. So, so don't, yeah, don't discount the importance of recognizing what it is. Um, and again, like I was saying, you know, I think there can also be quite a lot of value in being able to meet part of a need. Mm-hmm. Um, it's mm-hmm. often, you know, the case that you can't meet all of it. And that could be the, that could be true for a long time that you might feel like I'm not, I'm not ever going to, you know, meet 
my need for um, sleep, you know, completely, you know. Um, yes, yes. I don't see an end to that, you know, for years here with this baby or something. <laughs> right. Um, right. Yeah. But again, I mean, even if you recognize that you're sleep deprived and you say, okay, well, like maybe I could get like 20 extra minutes if I did this, mm -hmm. um, you know, don't, don't discount that that, I mean, that could be significant. Um, yeah. Yeah. You know, and again, often we can sort of build on these things too. And I can, you know, start with that and then, you know, maybe in a couple months I can get a little bit more or I can figure something else out and um, make a different kind of shift. And again, like maybe I'm not ever going to, you know, get up to eight hours um, a night, but you know, if I went from five to six, that would probably make a huge difference. Right, right, um, right. Or right, carving out a few minutes to rest, even if you're not sleeping, right, during the day or something. But yes, making those gradual shifts can be just as important, even mm -hmm. if it's not meeting mm -hmm. the full, full, full right, need. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. So, so I think if, you know, going back to talking about like, how do you ask somebody, for, you know, for what you need, you know, I, maybe there's two things that come to mind for me. Like one is really just directly asking, yep. being, being very clear about what you need and just saying, here's what I need. Is that something that you could help me with? Or is that something that you can do? Um, and again, depending on the nature of the relationship, you know, probably depends on how much context or, you know, explanation um, we give to somebody. Mm -hmm. I think, um, some, some, sometimes we may um, not do a great job of, of asking, I think, from the standpoint of we're almost apologetic about the needing to ask. And yeah. so, you know, I would caution people that you don't want to make this, um, you know, too much of a, of a, you know, I know this is going to be a burden on you, or I'm so sorry I have to ask, or, you know, something mm -hmm. like that, where you're really like, setting it up as if this is something unreasonable. So I right. would go, I would go into it assuming that what you're asking for is reasonable because mm. even though I don't know all of you listening, I'm pretty sure <laughs> that if you're listening to this conversation, you're probably somebody who has not been asking for a lot. And so in your mind, even a little may feel like a lot, but it's yeah. probably not. Um, so I would err on the side of, of assuming that it's, it's okay. Like that this isn't a ridiculous thing to ask for. It may feel that way just because you've never done it before or in this relationship you're not used to asking for things. But, you know, there is always, of course, the chance that when we ask for something that the other person may say no. Mm -hmm. um, yep. And that is part of, you know, we need to accept that that's, that's a possibility. And that is part of why it's difficult to ask, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. When we don't ask, um, then we don't have to experience rejection mm -hmm. um, in that same way. I mean, I think we are we are probably experiencing some of those same feelings of disconnection of not being important to the other person actually by not asking. Um, but that's yeah, not yeah. necessarily true. Right. I mean, that's sort of our feeling that's holding us back from, from, from yeah. asking, but anyway, I'm sort of digressing here from <laughs> my, my original point in, you know, saying, okay, so yes, you, you ask, they may say no, Again, depending on the specific ask, I mean, it might be something that you can actually have some negotiation on. Like I was going to say, maybe modifying it or, yeah, right, negotiating. Right, exactly. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, so there may be some compromise that maybe they can't do all of what you're asking or in the way that you're asking, but, um, you know, they might be able to do some of it or at a different time or, you know, something like that. So that's, you know, something I think to keep an, an open mind about too, d depending on specifically what you're asking is is that, yes, could there be some modification that could still um, be worth doing? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. But it does, it, it, from my experience, and this may not be everyone's, but I think the more comfortable we get with what we need, so identifying how we're feeling, recognizing there is a need there, feeling you know, getting used to asking for what you need, it becomes part of that relationship, right? I mean, it's sort of the the expectation that you're going to come to me when you need something is going to 
be built, right? That it's not going to be all of a sudden you're going to ask and they're going to say no. You'll know, you'll get a sense of what is okay to ask for or how much they're going to be able to give you. Does that make mm-hmm. sense? Mm-hmm. Yes, that it starts, I think, kind of sh- changing the dynamic in the relationship mm-hmm. that we start to have different conversations. Yeah, 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 I agree. Well, and and as you said, I think at the very beginning th- that it can actually build more intimacy when we're able to help others with their needs too, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, that it is a more give and take reciprocal relationship versus one person constantly giving, giving, giving. Yeah. And I think the other thing, you know, that we were just talking about is that there is a certain vulnerability in asking for something. Yes. Right. And (laughs) And even though that's really hard in some ways to be vulnerable because there's that potential that somebody will say no, um, but but also there is connection in in the vulnerability um, mm-hmm. potentially, right? I mean, I I'm sharing something more personal with you when I say I need this. You know, this is I'm struggling with this. I'm having a hard time. Um, can you help me? There's often that in that kind of conversation, there is also that place for us to connect and for there to be empathy and understanding that can be real um, relationship building um, stuff that's going on there too, versus you think about the, you know, the opposite of that is that when you're never saying, hey, I'm having a hard time, hey, I need something, hey, I'm struggling, right, then there's a whole lot of, of information, there's a whole lot of you and your experience in the world that's not getting shared with somebody else. Mm-hmm. Um, and so they, they aren't knowing you in that full more personal way, um, like they do when you actually say, here's what's going on. Here's my feelings. Here's my needs. Um, yeah, they yeah. really do get to know you on, on a deeper level. Right. Um, and if I, if I can just sort of backtrack, you know, the other thing that I was going to mention um, about the asking is that sometimes we, we can use another approach, which um, I will say it doesn't, it doesn't work for every need because sometimes, sometimes the need needs to be fulfilled in a very particular way. And I'm thinking about, you know, sometimes like if we're, if the need is like, I need to set a limit um, and I need to say, um, I need you to not do such and such because it's, um, it's hurtful to me. Um, There, there may not be a lot of wiggle room on that kind of need. Mm -hmm. Um, But on some of these other needs, like, you know, we were talking about, um, like, I need um, time off, I need, uh, you know, a break, um, or something like that. Um, That need could potentially be met in quite a few different ways. And and in a situation like that, um, we might even be able to tell our partner or the other person, it doesn't have to be your partner, it could be a friend or a coworker or whoever, um, but telling them what the need is um, and then actually asking them to help you figure out Mm -hmm. how they could help you meet it rather than saying specifically, could you do this, right? Mm -hmm. Um, And that, that sort of opens itself up, I think, already to the negotiation, the compromise, the, you know, what could we do here together that would work for both of us um, to help me get this need met. Um, So that's another approach. And it, it might feel, um, it might feel easier for some people, I think, to approach it that way, um, to be telling the other person, hey, here's what, here's my need, or it's almost sort of like, here's the problem that I need to solve. Mm -hmm. Um, Can you help me? Right. Can you help me figure out what a solution might be um, to that? Um, Because that feels cooperative. Um, Mm -hmm. But like I said, it doesn't work in every situation, because sometimes we have a very particular need that we, we, we need to be, have the need met in, in a certain way. Otherwise right. it's not going to meet the need. I right. hope that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. 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 That, that, right. There's a certain thing that you, you want from the other person either to either, whether it's them stopping doing something or setting a strict boundary, whatever that right. is, but when it's more flexible, you can, yeah. Uh, bring it into conversation as, hey, I need Mm -hmm. some help with this. Can you help me figure out this problem? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 
help me figure out how to meet my needs. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So um, if you were to offer a tip or resources for listeners out there to help them, you know, besides the, you know, finding the emotional words, checking in a couple times with themselves throughout the day. Are there other tips that you might offer for people wanting to better get in touch with their feelings and needs? Well, this is um, related to it. Um, It's really, I think, just sort of getting to know yourself better, which, you know, understanding our needs is part of that, but I think I'm sort of thinking about it in a broader context. Um, yes, yes. But, but also just trying to spend a little bit of time thinking about, like, what matters to you, whether it's like your, your values, your goals, um, you know, your interests, um, what do you like to do, things a- along those lines that just help you again, sort of pull back some of those layers and think about like, who are you at your core? Because Mm -hmm. sort of knowing those things about you then sort of helps you, you know, sort of organize your life in a way that, that aligns with what matters to you and, you know, what you want to be doing rather than, I think, I think a lot of times we're just sort of going through the motions of doing what we've always done without a lot of thought, about is this what I really want to be doing? Is this what really matters to me? Um, is this what I really want to be spending my time on? Are these really my goals, right? Yeah. Um, we've just sort of like absorbed a lot of stuff from around us, um, from other people and so forth. Um, and yeah. so it, it's almost, you know, there, there's sort of a need to slow down mm-hmm. um, and to be a little more mindful about things. Yeah. Um, yeah. So turning inward to, to pay attention to or explore, yeah, what those values or interests or um, goals are to help you figure out more about you, who you are as a person. Yeah. And then, you know, I really, I really like to, to bring in some elements of, you know, whether you want to call it self-compassion or, you know, positive Mm -hmm. self-talk or something, you know, affirmation, something where we're also, you know, telling ourselves that all of these things that we figure out about ourselves are okay. Yes. Um, And again, this is a hard thing if you're, if it's a sort of a foreign concept to you or just um, sounds really weird to say these things to yourself and you can either write them down or say them out loud. I think both work well. And I think either of those is better than just thinking it. Um, There's something about the process of writing or the process of hearing it out loud, or you could even make a little voice recording if you, if you wanted. Um, But it sort of makes it more real, I think. Um, Just put it on paper or just say it out loud. Um, But what we want to do is, yes, we really want to over and over again, affirm that we are okay, just the way that we are. With and all of our needs and yes, wants and yes. feelings, all of it. Exactly, exactly. Um, so yes, as we're pulling out these pieces of ourselves and seeing them, we want to make sure that we're we're feeling good about them, um, mm-hmm. or working towards feeling good about them. Um, yes. And so, sort of taking an active um, approach to saying saying the things that you really need to hear. Um, mm, yeah. Right. And I mean, that's one piece of, you know, meeting that need for ourselves is giving to ourselves, you know, some of that emotional good stuff that we need. Oh, yeah. That we're so easy. It's so, you know, we're so willing to give those good things to the other people in our lives, but it's so much harder to do it for ourselves. But mm-hmm. so, so mm-hmm. important. So important. Yes. Yes. And I, and I really think everybody can do it. Um, if they just keep practicing and, mm-hmm. you know, and go into it, realizing it feels weird, <laughs> <laughs> you know, but I, but I always tell everybody that, you know what, it, you are a great caretaker for other people. So you know how to say nice, supportive, encouraging things <laughs> to other people, right? <laughs> right. You know how to do it. And it's, it's, it's the skill isn't different. It just feels different because yeah. we're right. We question whether um, we should be saying these things to ourselves. And so if we can kind of try to get out of thinking about like, should I do this? Do I deserve to do this? And just 
do it. So. Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> because it's, to, yeah. 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 It, Take our it, word for it. Like, we're just going <laughs> to tell you, just, just, just do, do that it. part of it. Right. <laughs> Even if it feels weird. Yeah. Cause it does take practice. It does take practice to, to, to do it. And then like, I do think it sort of opens the door to feel it too. Like that we do. That yes. It's okay to be who we are. Yeah. It's an interesting thing. Um, yeah. You know, cause you're right. I think a lot of people wait until they feel it or even like they even want to wait until I, I really believe it before I could say it or write it down or, you know, mm. do that for myself. But, but often it's actually the opposite. It's, you know, if you can actually do the action, um, it can actually help you to start believing in it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So. Yeah. It's like reinforcing yeah, those neural pathways. It's, it's right. The way starting that, that little, yeah. Feel. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We're yeah. Just... Sort of act the way you want to think or feel. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Exactly. Well, Sharon, I appreciate so much to you taking the time today to talk to us. And I would love for the listeners to know how to find you. So how did they find you? <laughs> sure. My website is livewellwithsharonmartin.com. And nice. that's where you can find all my stuff. Awesome. Well, I will share your links on the, in the show notes and some of the resources we talked about today. And I just really, truly appreciate your being here once again. Well, thank you for having me. It was definitely a pleasure. Well, I hope you enjoyed that conversation with Sharon Martin. As always, I find her just a wealth of information and um, resources as well. She has done this work for such a long time and she truly gets what it's like to, to be a woman who is, you know, but I don't know if she herself is a recovering perfectionist, but, um, I know that she gets it and that makes the conversation so much more real and helpful, I think. So I hope that If you struggle to identify your needs, if you are struggling with putting your feelings into words, I will be including in the show notes uh, a list or a chart of feeling words, and that can be the first step. So checking in with yourself a couple times a day to just see how you're feeling and then asking yourself, what do I need right now? And maybe it's just like, I'm thirsty. I need a glass of water or I have to go to the bathroom. And then taking that step to meet what your need is in that moment, whether asking someone else or meeting that need for yourself. So I hope that you all have a wonderful week. I hope that you will work toward checking in with yourself and your feelings as you go into this next week. Ciao for now from this woman warrior. Thanks for listening and subscribing to the Woman Warriors podcast. Music was written and performed by Andy Cush. If you'd like more information on this episode, you can find the show notes, the resources shared today, and links to the guests' profiles at womanwarriors.com. Thank you.